I said uh, we won them all. We were three and zero, so we're off to a great start. Um, uh, in all seriousness, the you know it was our goal this week to um, practice at the game times we were going to be playing this weekend, kind of get our bodies in rhythm of what what to expect. Um, so it was nice to uh, get some innings for our pitchers, live abs for our hitters, and um, and it gave it gave us the opportunity to play multiple lineups. So um, honestly, I I was pleased with what I saw. Uh, I think this team has continued to get, this looks like a different team than we did in the fall. I can tell you that. Um, they've put in a lot of work. Uh, they've worked hard. And I think, um, uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but one thing we were doing is we're really hitting the ball well. So I was, I was pleased. I was pleased with that. Um, to me, um, a notable performer was Jordan Fabian. I think keep your eyes out for Jordan Fabian this year. She's somebody who really uh, put in the time in the off season. Uh, she'll be behind the plate for us or at first base. Um, but to me, she's a bat that we're going to have to have in the lineup, but she was a tough, tough out. She was a tough out this weekend. And go ahead and use the raise hand feature for those that want to ask questions and we'll open it up to the floor. Go ahead, Eric. Coach, talk about your pitching staff. I know that you've got more arms than uh, you know you've had in recent years. Talk about the health and what you've seen from your staff here as you get ready to start the season. Yeah, I'm excited about the pitching staff. So um, we returned our entire staff. So we lost KK Drotar, which is a big hit. She pitched a lot of innings for us in her career. But uh, we have Kelsey O back, who's a veteran. She's um, she is as healthy as she has been in a long time and has looked really good at practice. Uh, Carson Oaks, to me, had um, really came out of the fall, I would say, as our number one pitcher. Um, she's, looked very, she's looked very strong here recently and gives you a lot of different looks on the mound. And then uh, Leah Powell, who had our SEC wins last season, had a nice freshman campaign. Uh, she'll be back, and I think she'll just be – uh, more seasoned uh, this year. Um, so, and then we've got a lot of different looks with Bailey Bettenbaugh. Rachel Vaughn is back and healthy now as a lefty and a lefty in, uh, in, in Skyler as well. Questions for coach? Anybody? I, I would just, I'll follow up on the pitching piece that, um, you know, I think nice, I think you're seeing softball move to larger staffs. Um, you know, it used to be you could play a whole season with two. Uh, and now I think it is a little more like the baseball model in that you might have a starter and a closer and somebody throws some middle innings. And I think with the type of pitchers we have, we could really um, pitch to some different matchups this year. Eric, go ahead. What are some of the things you're looking forward to finding out about your team this weekend when you face another opponent that you can't find out at practice or at scrimmage? <laughs> yeah, it, honestly, for me, it's about our, our pitchers throwing the different hitters. We have, we have done so much live. I, it'll t I will tell you it's something that uh, we made uh, a point of emphasis this year was to make sure our hitters – had a lot of ABs going into the season. I would tell you, I think we're probably nearing almost 80 at bats for our hitters. Um, because we had so many pitchers on staff, we threw a live, we threw live a lot in practice. And I think you can see that that's paying off. Um, our, our, like I said, our hitters look really good. So yesterday in uh, practice, I just said, I cannot wait for our pitchers to face other hitters that don't know them as well. So it, it's been tough for us getting our hitters out a little bit just because. Uh, it's hard to look different after that many looks at the same picture. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to solidifying some defensive positions. Uh, you know, I think we've really preached talent's flexible. And, you know, what, the what, what we thought was going to be our lineup at the beginning of the season has already changed in our minds and I think could probably change again. So as you know, we're trying to figure out who's playing the middle infield. We had a middle infield that was the same for four and five years with Kenzie McGuire and Matt Gozel. And so figuring out what our middle is going to look like, I think is going to be important. Uh, like I said, we're young and talented. 
and I think just getting those players reps is going to be uh, important. But um, I think we're going to start Emma Sellers. She's a freshman at shortstop. She's looked great in practice. And I think um, you guys are really going to enjoy watching her play. Michael, go ahead. Uh, hey, Beverly, uh, you were talking about the hitters looking good uh, during scrimmages. And I'm just kind of curious, you know, what's kind of your feel for how the offense might look and, and sort of operate this year? Is it, you know, maybe power, speed, kind of what's sort of your feel as far as just the personality of, of the offense? That you're well, I, I don't think we, I don't think we're going to have tremendous power, but I think we've really talked about um, understanding the zone. I haven't, um, I thought our, our hitters have done a really nice job in forcing the pitchers to bring it in the zone because of their understanding of the zone. We spent a lot of time in that this fall. So I haven't seen the, the hitters give away at bats in terms of expanding their zone and really understanding their, their zone and what they're looking for. So we spent a lot of time in that. So I think you're gonna see um, a group that's comfortable hitting with two strikes um, that can put the ball in play and put a lot of pressure on the, on the defenses. So I would say that we're athletic. We will run the base as well. Um, but I think, you know, for us, it's going to be about putting the ball in play hard and, um, and being aggressive on the bases. Who, who are a couple of the, you think, key hitters in that lineup, you know, key cogs to make sure that y'all are scoring runs the, the way you need to? Uh, well, I mentioned Jordan Fabian earlier. I mean, she's looked fantastic at practice. Um, uh, AJ White for us was um, our leader in the fall in terms of production at the plate. Now she's fast, right? So AJ can make a triple look easy in our park. So she's a lot of fun when she gets on uh, to watch her run. Um, Katie Preble for us is a senior and um, she's looked really, really good at the plate. And with Preble, you know, the ball can leave the park in a, in a hurry. Um, Cassidy Prupit is a returning hitter for us, uh, led the team in RBIs. Um, she's going to be an important piece to the offense, um, as well as uh, I, I think um, uh, Hannah, Kumiyama, Hannah Kumiyama is back from injury, and she has really been having some good plate appearances for us. So uh, she could be a nice surprise for us at the plate. Uh, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, uh, you mentioned Jordan a couple times uh, so far. Obviously, I was talking to her yesterday after the scrimmage, but I'm curious, outside of just her hitting ability that you've seen, have you seen her in her senior year now maybe stepping up as a leader as well for, a, uh, again, a pretty young team? Yes. And as a matter of fact, uh, Jordan Fabian was named captain by her teammates. Um, so she's definitely leading us uh, vocally as well. So, you know, she's certainly led it from a work ethic standpoint for a long time, but now she's kind of taken on the added layer of uh, vocal leadership. Um, and I think she's done a really nice job um, bringing, bringing the team along with her, but uh, Jordan will, will captain the team this season. Eric, go ahead. Couple questions, Coach. Uh, obviously, you got the out of the uh, box rules adjusted this year where it's no longer an automatic out, it's now a, a strike or the opponents could take the result of the play. What was your reaction to the adjustment to that rule? Yeah, so delayed dead ball, right, will be the call. Um, I think it's good. I think it's like when they when they change the illegal pitch rule, right, that you're hoping because the penalty is not so severe because before it was an out, right, now it's going to be delayed dead ball um, that, um, that, that maybe we'll get it called more. And I, I think that was the hope when they changed the illegal pitch rule right that it was a ball not a base not 60 feet um and i think this time with it not being an out uh it's going to help people call it more consistently so you know the argument was from the umpires that it was hard to see it was tough to see and i just think they're probably going to see it a lot better now it'll be easier to see <laughs> all of a sudden so um i i think it's a good change i thought the um i thought the penalty was severe before and then obviously instant replay will be able to use it in conference series. You've been using it in the SEC tournament and it'll likely be used in the postseason. Uh, your reaction to that, do you like that? And, and is, there a, is that an adjustment as a coaching staff that having replay now in conference games? 
Yeah, I, I think it'll be an adjustment, but I love it, right? And I think um, for, for a couple of reasons, the fans are used to it, right? Anybody that's been watching sports on TV are used to the replay. Um, I think softball's there now in terms of the coverage and um, we have the technology there. We just haven't had the rule in place. So I think the fans have been wanting it. Uh, for coaches, we want the call to be right. And so if we have the opportunity to get the call right, um, we, we want that. So I got to get used to my go to the headset um, signal, right? And um, and I think um, I've sat on in a lot of the Zooms as they're training the umpires here recently. Um, they're giving an analogy, which is pretty cool. They, they um, I think it makes it easy to understand. They're telling the um, umpire when you're on, on the field, you're the police officer, right? Quick decisions, you make the call. And then when you go to the headset, you know, you're, you're, the, you're the, the district attorney, like you're trying to figure out, is there enough video evidence to change this call? And, um, and so I think just getting used to the speed of that um, is going to be great. But I, I think it's great for the game. And I think the fans want it because uh, they've been accustomed to it in all of their sports. Coach, you still got a pretty young roster. You had a lot of freshmen last year, you brought in quite a few freshmen again this year. So most of your, over half your roster is, is underclassmen. Um, kind of talk about what you can expect from them and, and kind of how you need those, the, the seniors to step up for your team. Yeah, I, I think we're young and talented, right? Originally this, our sophomore class, they were brought in and recruited to replace the Bozel and the McGuire's and they had the opportunity because of COVID to play with them for a year. So um, we, we had some, some freshmen get significant minutes last year, which was, um, which was important. Um, and then, and then I think too, with adding this freshman class um, that we really do, we've got some depth at, at the positions and the talent that we're looking for. So um the leadership for us and Fabian and Katie Preble, Rachel Vaughn, Kelsey O, like we've got a good group of seasoned veterans that I think are doing a great job bringing along the, the, the younger group, but the, the freshmen and sophomores have proven they can play. Um, so I think it's just about getting them more innings and at-bats and, um, and getting them ready to, to roll into conference play. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, just came out that uh, Coach, uh, that Coach Compton, you'll you'll be honoring her uh, the, during the season here later on in the during the season. What was it like uh, following her and, and taking over the program? The great tradition, obviously, you have over there. Oh, I tell you what, because you know when Coach Compton was here, I was a player at South Carolina at North Carolina uh, when Coach Compton was here at South Carolina, and I've always had a tremendous amount of respect for her. I mean, South Carolina was always. Uh, the team to beat in our region and she won consistently over a long period of time and so I just she just laid such a, a great foundation of success here and it's something that we continue to talk about as a program but I'm just really pleased that um, she's being honored by the university I think it's fantastic for our alumni to come back and celebrate her um, I've really on a personal level I've really appreciated her um, you know, we've been in touch ever since I've gotten the job and she has been nothing but helpful to me. And anytime I've made the phone call, she's said yes, um, with the exception of once. And um, she told me no during COVID. Uh, I wanted her to get on a Zoom call. I was going to do a happy hour Zoom with some alumni and she said no. <laughs> but so no, she drew the line at Zoom calls for me. But um, anything else though, come throw out a first pitch, come talk to the team, come do a um, a voiceover. I mean, you name it, she's always been a yes and very supportive and uh, a Gamecock through and through. So I'm really glad we're uh, honoring her legacy. What was the advice she gave you when you took over? Um, you know what? It was, uh, she gave me more things about uh, managing South Carolina and the personnel and um, but she just kept saying, you know, she just kept encouraging me, like, you'll do great. You've got a great support system. Uh, it was just a lot of confidence and knowing that you had a vote of confidence for her, you know, helped me getting started. But she was really helpful in uh, talking about the players that were here. And um, like I said, she was really gracious in, in my transition here. <laughs> 